welcome to the Signal Path. Since the last episode, I received a lot of messages from you guys about the type of episodes you'd like to see. And we have a lot of exciting topics to cover in the future. A lot of equipment review, a lot of component review, a lot of hacking. And today's episode is also for you hackers out there. We're going to see if we can combine this disposable camera and this Nixie tube. Well, specifically the flash circuit inside a disposable camera. And in the process, we're going to learn exactly how that flash circuit works at the schematic level and also using some measurements. We're also going to take a little bit of a look at these Nixie tubes. So let's get started with this and see what I'm talking about here. You can get these at pretty much any uh, convenience store or any big supermarket. Th what is special about these things is that it has, this particular model has a built-in flash, so that's the kind that we're looking for. And if you go in some places that develop the film for these things, they may uh, give you a used one for free, since really they just recycle them, they throw them away. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart, take the circuit that we want out of it, analyze the circuit, and at the same time see if we can use that circuit to somehow power the Nixie tube. So it would be an interesting combination. I'm not sure if anyone's ever done that before, but there's a lot of cool things that people have done using these disposable flash cameras because there's a high voltage DC-DC converter that's inside it and of course a very big capacitor. So we're going to take one of these apart and take, let's take a look and see what's inside it. We'll look at the circuit and we'll go from there. Okay, here we have a disposable camera with a flash built in. Before we take this apart, I have to warn you that you should only do this at home if you have experience with high voltage circuits. Because even if the camera hasn't been used for a while, the capacitor inside may hold enough charge to give you a nasty shot. So never do this unless you have experience with this type of circuits. These type of cameras are all housed inside a paper container. and This, this is done because they want to be able to take this apart very quickly and take the film out. So I've already taken this apart so we can throw that away. The top and the bottom are held together using these little um, plastic pins that you can put a screwdriver on and shift and then you can take that off. So I've done that also. So you can take the top cover off and we can throw that away. So if you look inside the camera, we can right away see this large AA battery, large with respect to the rest of the circuit. And you should always keep these even if you're not interested in the circuit itself because once the camera is used up and you're about to throw it away or give it away, these guys usually still have enough charge in them to be useful for something else, maybe a remote control for example. So don't throw these away or if you do, make sure you recycle them. So here's a AA battery that powers the flash. Here's the flash circuit itself. This entire PCB is only responsible for operating the flash circuit. At the top, you can see this little metallic pin this metallic piece here is actually the on and off button of the flash. There's a plastic button on the outside. When you press down, this thing comes down and connects the two paths that are right underneath it. And that closes the circuit and turns the flash on. On the front side of the camera, you can see that big capacitor I was telling you about. So this, this capacitor is what holds the charge for the flash. There is the flash unit, uh, the flash tube itself at the top. And there is a little LED, this one's actually equipped with a little LED that shows you, tells you when the flash is charged and ready to be fired. Interestingly enough, I took apart another identical camera and that one had a neon lamp inside. So we'll talk a little bit about that when we're analyzing the circuit. So let's try and uh, uh, run this flash once and fire it and see how it works. Again, so we have to be very, very careful here. So here's the on and off button. And there's also two pieces of wire, two pieces of metal here. And these two pieces of metal are the, uh, the mechanism that fires the flash itself. When you push the shutter button, a little uh, uh, lever comes down and briefly touches these two pins together. And I think, I think that's the lever right here. This, this thing comes down right there and touches those two pins together. When that happens, that's when the flash actually is fired. So we can charge it. And then I will manually do that so we can see the flash go off once. So I will push this down and you will hear that characteristic noise that you hear when, uh, when the flash is being charged and we'll talk about why that is later on. So here we go. So I can hear it charging. So I, will, I can see that the LED has turned on meaning that the flash is fully charged and ready to be fired. So I'm going to let go of the button and I'm going to connect those two wires that I told you together very briefly and we can see the flash go off. There it is. So even though the flash went off, the capacitor is not fully discharged. So there is enough charge in there to give you a shock. So you have to be very careful. Um, so I'm going to discharge the capacitor first using a, 
uh, metallic piece. You take the battery out and then take the flash circuit out. So let's take the battery out first. I'll put that aside. And I can see the two terminals of the big capacitor at the top. You can see them right there. That's the first terminal and that's the second one there. So I'm going to use a screwdriver and discharge that capacitor before we move forward. Okay, I went ahead and discharged the capacitor off the camera. I will show you a, a, a complete discharge using that method. It's just fun to do uh, later on during the video. So you can take the fly circuit out by moving this pin on the side. So let me do that. And here you go. So the fly circuit comes right out. Uh, it's one single unit. We don't need this. We can throw the rest of this out. And let's take a close look at this and see what components are involved in making one of these and then we will analyze the circuit. So of course from the back you can see the flash tube and you can see the two terminals of the battery and the little terminal here that does the firing of the flash itself and in the front we can see that the entire circuit uses only one transistor. So there's one transistor, there's one diode, there are three resistors, one little in here. I hope you can see this on camera. Uh, there is one there and there is one resistor right there. There is a big transformer here and a little transformer on this side right here and there is another capacitor up here and a big one here. This big, this is the electrolytic capacitor, that's the capacitor that keeps the charge for the flash and this is an aluminum fold capacitor here that is uh, for a slightly different function so I'll tell you about that later. And uh, here, this transformer has a top connection this top connection from this transformer goes directly to the center tap of the flash and this, the two connectors of the capacitor go to the other two sides of the flash and we will take a look at that too. So what I've, gone, what I've done is that I've taken this and I have drawn a full schematic of it and we'd like to find out how this works. So there's going to be a little bit of uh, uh, theoretical stuff there and then we will uh, see what we can do with it.